On today's episode of the CLS Experience, we have a very delightful treat. He's an award-winning super entrepreneur, keynote speaker, best-selling author, and event creator. He's reinvented himself from being 22 years young and homeless in his darkest hour to building and scaling multiple eight-figure business consisting of construction, real estate, and personal development, just to name a few. He's all about education and helping people cultivate their second chance at life by going from stuck to unstoppable, just like the name of his dynamite podcast. He's the founder of Transform You, and he's an extraordinary elevator who's not afraid to show his scars. He's just a juggernaut in all facets of life and a terrific human being. Please welcome the relentless, goal-oriented, practical, and transformative, handsome Stephen Scoggins. How you doing, Stephen? <laughs> uh, well, I um, I, I just, I've, I, 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 I'm shocked actually. <laughs> what do you mean? I hope I can live up to all that stuff, man. I appreciate that. No, that was, that's quite the uh, intro, brother. Appreciate I did good by you. Huh? I did good oh, by absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I'm just, uh, you know, I don't, I don't get called handsome that often, so it shocks me. <laughs> well, first of all, you are, and, and second of all, like I always like to say to the guests who have similar reactions, it's your story, brother. You wrote it. I just said it. Yeah, this is true. This is true. It wasn't, uh, I don't know if I wrote it as much as I lived it, but either way, I'm grateful that it happened. Hell yeah. And, and the funny part is you and I didn't meet that long ago, but it was one of those rare instant connections where we, where we just vibed right away. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we probably could have talked for a couple hours before we hit record, but obviously we wanted to save some of that juicy stuff for the show. <laughs> and for the audience listening, let me just say this. If you're not familiar with Steven, Go do a deep dive. Check out his book, his courses, his website, his social media, everything. What I think is most valuable today is we just have an unbelievable conversation straight up. Before yeah. we jump around a little bit, we're going to get a little weird. You ready for me? Let's go. Let's have some fun. What's your superpower, brother? My superpower is relentlessness. I don't know how to stop, even if I tried. And I've tried a few times. Gift or a curse? Uh, it can be a bit of both. More gift. Jury's than still out. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. No, it's 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 one part gift, uh, one part struggle in that uh, there are certain things in life that you need to pivot from and pivot around and pivot, you know, pivot towards or pivot away from. Um, I typically learn the hard way. So sometimes I don't pivot as quickly, but it always helps me go to the next level. Same. I love it. I get the feeling you're the type of cat that there's no middle gear. It's 150 <laughs> miles an hour or it's taking a nap. There's nothing yeah, yeah. in between. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Right? My mom used to tell me I, I have a one switch off and on. Yeah, same, <laughs> same. Uh, look, do a thing, do it well, right? right. If That's you're right. going to think, you might as well think huge. That's right. Yeah, so true. So true. So true. Yeah. And, and, and also, like, it's such an advantage when you play big like that, because now all of a sudden, like, where most people see limitations, yeah. You just see possibilities and opportunities. Yeah, no, that's that 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 is true. I think one of the things that I specialize in, though, and is rather than thinking, it's not that I don't dream big or I don't think big or I don't have big aspirations. Or I don't feel like I'm called to do something more at scale. What I have learned is to focus on the incremental progress rather than the supernatural leaps, because the incremental progress always leads you to the supernatural leaps. You just won't even realize that it's happening. And anytime I've pursued the supernatural leaps without doing the the infinite, you know, the little step-by-steps, you end up losing yourself in the process rather than absorbing the process, if that makes any sense. It makes a lot of sense. So deep and, and profound. And like our, our mutual buddy, Uncle Ed, my let likes yeah. to say like invisible progress, right? Yeah. And, and I always tell my community, like when I would, when the pandemic happened and I reinvented myself, um, you know, I saw a lot of Netflix and a lot of day drinking. I got to work and, mm -hmm. and I was working 20 hour days to build where we are now, but it's not work to me. I genuinely love this stuff. But one yeah. thing I always say is this, you can't guarantee touchdowns every day or, or the quantum leaps as you're referring to. But one thing that in my opinion, and I love to hear if you agree that you can guarantee is you can get a first down every day. Mm -hmm. You can yep. do something increment to move the chains, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, think about it this way, right? There's by the Gregorian calendar. Now there's 360 days, a year, or 365 days a year. Okay. If you take one step, just, just one step every day in whatever direction towards a better relationship, a better finance, a better business, a better, whatever your thing is, whatever thing you're pursuing, just one step a day, by year's end, you have taken 365 steps towards that very thing that you're so passionate about, okay. right? It's incremental progress is what wins the day. That's it. So we, we, we dropped the mic, but we're just getting warmed up. That's right. <laughs> 
I wanted to ask you, because I always get a kick out of this, selfishly and for the community, of course, for on a day-to-day basis, a guy like you, what are some non-negotiables for you that you must do every day? Uh, number one is I must pray and meditate every day. Um, I've learned that if I give the first part of my day to that zone of genius or that spiritual concern or that source, if you will, then inevitably what happens is, is it sets the tone for attracting a lot of positive things in my direction. So my prayer and meditation always consists of gratitude. It always consists of uh, saying to myself, please let today be a day I can be of service. Uh, please let today uh, be a day I can illustrate light and love to other people. Uh, please let today be um, uh, a stepping stone towards a better version of myself on a consistent basis. And I do that intentionally because I, I feel like it sets the intent behind the day, right? <clears throat> that means when I go into my, my business calls, right, I, I'm seeking to serve my team. I'm seeking to serve my client. When I go into uh, connecting with my wife, I'm seeking to be more intentional about what we're texting about or, or you know, you know, trying to beat my, my son's college football game, the, you know, tomorrow. And, you know, all these types of things are, are very intentional. And I think the other thing on top of that is I'm a big believer, mind, body, soul, right? So mind and soul, I can kind of work on a little bit first thing in the morning by prayer and meditation. Um, but body is the next thing. I'm, I immediately hit the gym. Um, as someone who's owned and operated multiple businesses simultaneously, I can tell you that on the days that I don't work out or I don't give a, a, a full-fledged effort in, whether it's cardio or just doing something of momentum, um, the stress of that day increases like tenfold. So if you're in that position uh, as a listener, or as a viewer, where you are constantly under a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, and you don't have a workout or some kind of activity outlet, um, I guarantee if you apply that for probably a good 30, 40 days, you're going to notice a huge drop in your overall stress level. Um, and after that, I bucket my day in 15 minute increments. I'm, I'm looking for 15 minute bullet points. Where can I be most impactful? And I start with that question. Where can I be most impactful? Not where can I be busy, right? Very different conversation with yourself and your brain will give you an answer and tell you where to start. Well, first of all, this is gold straight up. And <laughs> let's be honest, there's a huge difference between being busy and being productive. Yep. Absolutely. Well, and look, <clears throat> one of the things that uh, you, you mentioned unstoppable before, uh, one of the things that I've always said is stuck is nothing more than not making progress. Becoming unstoppable is consistently making progress. It doesn't mean that you're, you're, you're in a position where you're not going to face adversity. You're not going to face struggle. You're not going to face hard times. What it says is, is you're not going to let those times define you. Right. So when you're going through these, these incremental sections uh, of life and business and career and stuff like that, so much of going to the next level is sheer momentum, right? Taking the momentum that you have in the morning and turning it into a big push throughout the course of the day takes time and it takes intensity and it takes focus. Well, if you're so distracted by everything around you, then you're not making consistent focus on a regular basis or you don't have consistent focus on a regular basis, which makes you're probably making progress, if you will, in the wrong direction, which is the definition of being busy. So to me, being busy is nothing more than making progress in the wrong direction. I love this, buddy. Only negative I got going on is we don't have 10 hours to chat. <laughs> uh, we're brother, well, the good thing is we're brothers, so we'll be chatting a lot. <laughs> hell yeah, that, that's right. Uh, I, I just, I agree with every single thing that you're saying, straight up. Um, and it's funny because I imagine a guy like you, like fitness, of course, it's great to look good, but it's more for the mental component, right? Mm -hmm. And you yep. mentioned the word momentum. I think one of the most crucial things to understand in the world is momentum. It's the hardest thing to get, and yet it's the easiest thing to yep. lose. But when well, you have that intensity, that's it. And, and when you have it, the wind's at your back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and intensity, <clears throat> intensity is the intangible that builds the day, right? Intensity in and of itself is a choice. You're choosing to be intense. You're choosing to be focused. You're choosing to put your highest priority first. You are choosing. <clears throat> you're not in a position where if you're choosing intently, you're choosing your intent, which is a byproduct of becoming intensely, insanely focused at a specific objective. If you're not doing that, then by definition, you're actually getting yourself off the rails. Like to me, it's a, it's a very simple thing to get there. I'm intensely going to focus right now on this amazing conversation with my good buddy, right? I mean, I'm, you and I are going to be zoned in for the next, you know, 30, 45, 50 minutes, right? Because that's who we are. <clears throat> well, when I get done with this, I'm going to be intensely focused on driving four hours to Charleston. <laughs> so I can be intensely focused on being at an important meeting tomorrow where they'll have 100% of my attention, right? The, the, you mentioned it earlier where it's the power of being present. 
<clears throat> but if you're going to use the power of being present in the moment, you need to be intensely focused on being present in the moment. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So yeah. to, to me, that's the core attribute of whether or not you are going to have supernatural and stop ability, or if you get to stay stagnant and stuff like that. And yes, it does. It will put off a higher resonance. It will have a higher rate of vibration. It'll give you a higher level of spiritual, spiritual connection. But so much of that is based on you choosing to be intensely focused in a specific direction. I'm laughing because I just love you. And it's like, you know, when the same frequency gets together, yeah. it's just gold. And I never heard that articulated like that. And I've had some of the world's greatest on the show before. You have to be so focused on being mindful and present. Yeah, How that's cool exactly is that? right. That's so cool, yeah. right? Like you would think that like, being focused is actually like the opposite of mindful, but on the contrary, mm -hmm. you're being so intentional about being so present that yeah. you're not available for any distractions. Yeah. Yeah. Mindful. You're being mindful, full of being present in the moment, using your mind to realize you're in a present moment to capitalize on and to make connections with, yeah. you know, you and I got, you were very, you and I are fortunate. We got to meet each other for the first time at a, uh, an incredible New York mixer at the top of a, one of the uh, one of the restaurants at the top of the you know one of these buildings and it was amazing. Dream Hotel, yeah, yeah, exactly. But one of the things that we did specifically is you and I were very focused and very present on getting to know each other just a little bit more. And the next thing you know, we had people coming up to us, or it was, it was like standing there listening to our conversations, right. which I thought was kind of cool. So yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It's a vibe, straight up. Yeah. This is awesome. Uh, one of the things you talk about often, and, and of course, that everybody should be looking at Steven's content, but I'm a fan and I wanted to show this conversation the respect it deserves. You talk a lot about teamwork and, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of entrepreneurs that listen to this show that are building businesses and so forth. How critical is that component, teamwork? Well, it's incredibly critical in that if it's about you, it'll never be successful. There's a time to grind. There's a time to fight. There's a time to get your idea off the ground but you will never be able to scale yourself if you can't scale your business and you can't scale your business or your occupation or your profession without team, without people. Um, it takes people to make a dream actually come true. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I'm very blessed. Um, I have about 400 people working for me uh, across the businesses, across, you know, a couple States um, all the way from my executive team, all the way down to in the construction industry, the, the installer, if you will, the person that, and I think about them on a consistent basis when I make, decisions, right? If I make a bad decision, I can affect the average person has four people in their household, 1600 people by making one bad decision, right? By putting other people, other people's interests first, I'm always actually protecting my own interests because I'm actually propelling them before I propel myself. So what happens is, is rather than me having to propel myself, they're actually pulling me back like a rubber band and then catapult you forward. But you can only do that if you have buy-in from the people around you and you only get buy-in from the people around you by helping them find something called goal alignment. How can what you do, how you do it and why you do it help them get what, how and why they want, right? What is it that they want? Do they want a supernatural relationship? Do they want incredible finances? Do they want a profession that they can just feel powerful in? What is it that they want? And then how can you as a person and or you as a business or business owner affect that in a positive direction? And if you can find goal alignment with it, inevitably what happens is, is you get to create that insane, intense momentum we talked about earlier. Because now like a Clydesdale, you're not pulling one with one horse, you're pulling with 12. Yeah. Right. So, and that's the kind of momentum I want people to think about. That's great. And also like, you got to surround yourself with the right people, right? And mm -hmm. goal alignment, figuring out like, yep. what is the intention so you're not wasting anybody's time. Uh, yep. we're, we're building and we're scaling. We're going really fast right now. And, and one thing that if I'm being 100% transparent and vulnerable, it's been a little bit challenging to find the right people yeah. that buy in. It, it's not easy. Yeah. No, and it's, it's, and it's not supposed to be easy. Right, right. The right people are not the ordinary people. Right. The ordinary people are lost in their day-to-day -day lives and focus too much on their struggle rather than their, you know, perpetual uh, success that they could have if they chose to sacrifice. Plugged into the matrix. Exactly. In that, in its simplest form, yes, plugged into the matrix, plugged into the world's falling apart, the economies are going to implode, um, you know, yeah. banks are down, stock market's down, da, da, da. Well, guys, this has been happening for thousands of years. Economies rising, rising and falling. Seasons. Um, businesses rising and following are falling. Uh, economic developments, political environments. It's been it's rising and falling. And if you get lost in that stuff, unfortunately, you're getting lost in not focused on the thing you're building, whether it's yourself or other things. 
So, you know, so one of the things that I like to tell people to do specifically is when it comes to finding the right people, the lens that I use is do they have the character that I can agree with? Do they have the integrity that I can trust them that when I'm not actually watching them, they're doing the right thing? Okay. Um, are they reliable, aka loyal? And is there some value that I have that I can offer them? And is there some value they can offer me back? Those are types of frameworks that I use to try to select those people. The one thing that I, I think we all do is we see more of a mirror image of ourselves a lot of times. And if that mirror image is there, we'll accept the mirror image, not realizing that the person that we need is actually past the mirror image of ourself. It's awesome. Yeah. What I love about you, besides the many things, is you're so systematic, brother. Like you have your philosophies and mm -hmm. you don't really waver. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can only, I can only, I made a decision, a conscious decision a long time ago to only teach from a place of things that I have lived, tested, and understood. Um, I find that most of us are trying, we're throwing too much stuff at the wall. We're not actually giving something uh, a true chance. You know, we talked about earlier, um, just the sheer fact, of, you know, what are your non-negotiables first thing in the morning or whatever. That's a ritual I have, and I have that ritual because it protects me, right? It focuses me. It, it creates diligence within me. And most of us are so distracted, we can't be diligent. Yeah. Beautifully said. That's it. I want to bring this up today because it'll give a little context, a little bit of your background, but it's also something that's universal for everybody listening today. And that is the power of setbacks, breakdowns, and losses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, first of all, they're not something to be avoided. Um, I think the first half of my life where uh, that did lead me to homelessness, I was trying to avoid the very things that uh, call it God, call it source, call it universe, call it whatever you want to call it. Um, was using to shape me. And the further I pulled away from it, the more tension it created. And the more I leaned into it, the quicker it became a catapult, so to speak. Like most of us, we try to avoid pain. We try to avoid adversity. Uh, we try to avoid growth. Uh, we try to avoid the very things that ultimately take us to the next level. Um, it's one of the reasons when I'm given the privilege to um, share on stage, uh, whether it's at my own events or other events, uh, that I spend a lot of time just telling people where I screwed up. Um, I, I have zero problems with that. I believe you can't be transformational until you're transparent, uh, which means you've got to be transparent with yourself. You got to be radically honest with yourself, um, not in a judgmental or beat yourself up kind of way, more of an observation, almost like watching yourself as a, on a movie screen. And, and rather than being the actor in the movie, you now are the editor watching the movie, taking out the, the bits and pieces that don't make sense kind of that mentality. Um, because when you do that, what inevitably what happens is, is you have an outside perspective that now you can actually connect the dots. You can see why that struggle, that event, that thing happened to then ultimately take you to the next level. And at the end of the day, I think rather than, and all of us are guilty of this, Lord knows I was guilty of it for over a decade, trying to avoid pain rather than turning pain into progress. Let your pain become progress. Let your suffering become, you know, something more. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> Straight up. I, I've spoken to you many times since we started our relationship. You're as sharp and, and as on fire today as I've ever heard you, but you're locked oh. in. You're in the zone. This is Thank valuable you. to anybody. Th this is awesome. Um, and, and look, I know you've also said this. And again, everybody can relate to this in some capacity. Rock bottom is a foundation and bedrock to build on. And, and before mm -hmm. you dive into that, I just want to say, I want to acknowledge you. The transparency thing, it's something that was uncomfortable for me when I pivoted from Wall Street to what I'm doing now, mm -hmm. but I leaned into it and embraced it. And I got to tell you, it's made all the difference in the world on stage with my community, with the mm -hmm. audience and, and just being transparent and vulnerable. It yep. allows everybody to kind of form a connection, mm -hmm. right? Because it's relatable. And, and I don't know about you, but like when I was growing up, like Superman was, was never my favorite because I found it very hard to relate to him. Yeah. Um, but I always liked Batman because anybody could be him. Right. Yeah. So, so like, for, and that's just an analogy, but when you're transparent, first of all, it, it also gives credibility. Like, why should I listen to Stephen? Oh, he's been through it. He mm -hmm. was homeless. He made some poor choices, but he learned from them and now he's doing this. Yeah. So for anybody listening, that's any type of authority figure. I think it's really important to display empathy because that makes people have an opportunity to relate to you. Yeah. And then obviously 
again, you said rock bottom is, is actually a really good foundation to build off of. Yeah, it's the bedrock. Well, and the reality is, is look, if you're not transparent with yourself and you're not willing to go to that stage in the game, uh, inevitably what happens is, is rather than living an authentic life, you live an inauthentic life. And when you're living an inauthentic life, you always feel like a part of you is missing. You always feel a part of you is lonely, even though you can be surrounded with thousands of people. You always feel like you're not living in a way that is conducive to the, I would call it your created value, right? However, when you're radically honest with yourself and you operate in that transparency, much like you did in your major pivot, all of a sudden you learn things about yourself that have always been there that you never knew were there that are actually your personal superpowers, right? Your personal superpower is directly correlated to your level of being transparent, authentic with yourself, and I don't, again, I don't mean, I want to, I don't want people to get this confused. I don't want people to get confused with transparently looking at yourself, your circumstances, your growth uh, that's needed, um, even some of the stuff that you can amplify in your life from being judgmental, condemnation, derogatory. You know, if you think about it, uh, when you're not operating in a high state, right, you're not operating your highest version of yourself, what you are really doing in many cases, you're saying things to yourself you would never say to someone else because you know it would hurt them too bad. But yet we treat ourselves like that until we have the moment where this radical honesty, this transparency that causes transformation begins to occur. And you've lived it like, you know, right. You know what it's like to, to, to be living an in thought, authentic life versus living an authentic life today. And to have the contrast. Exactly. Yeah. When you need both. Yeah. you need Right. Contrast. So, it, so you have to, you have to be willing to accept where you're at, where you're at is where you're at and it's okay. Right. Most of us are like, where well, I'm, I'm right here. I should be further along. No, you're, no, you're right where you are because that's who you are right now. Right. And you are where you are because that's all you've allowed yourself to be. So why not allow yourself to be something more, something greater, something more transparent, something more true, something more authentic. And as a result, as you lean into that, your, your relationships will take a super supernatural turn. Your personal finances will take a supernatural turn positive. Your business or career or profession will take a supernatural term, turn in their positive direction because you are being you. No one else can be you. Only you can be you. Yeah. Not even twins have the same fingerprints. That's right. Or, that, or the same personality. That's right. Yeah. Think about it. How many... Uh, do I, we, have, we need to do a study on this just for fun. We, we'll go out and do a, a twin study. But in most cases, you typically have a one twin that's super outgoing and one twin that's super introverted, right? One twin that's super gifted with numbers, one twin that's super gifted with creativity. You're you, be you. That's so awesome. And I, you just brought me back, brother. When I was available for these creative divine downloads and I realized that personal development was more than a passion, it was a purpose. Mm -hmm. And I was going to step into this thing. I, I started to think, and I was like, what's proprietary about me is me. Mm -hmm. I'm weird. I'm strange, right? I, yeah. I run marathons. I say all these weird things, but that's me. Take it or leave it. It is what it is, but I'll take my shot and the right people will gravitate and the wrong people will not. And that's yeah. okay. But just the awareness that I had in the beginning was so liberating, right? It kind of sets you free because you know, from the get-go, I'm not for everybody and that's okay. Yeah. 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 Well, think about this. All right. So I don't know if you dealt with this when you first started speaking like I did. When I first started speaking, this was probably a decade ago, um, I would always get positive feedback when I was done, okay, which is great. The problem was, is I never got, I never got to a place where I felt like I was being super authentic with who I was on stage. I was always trying to emulate the people that I respected or aspired to be, right? The Dave Ramsey's, the John Maxwell's, the Simon Sinek's, and all these, you know, wonderful thought leaders who are very gifted in their own direction. And I would get on stage and I would have some of my own euphemisms that might kind of come across a little bit like them, a little bit like me. You know, when I did the Unstoppable Startup um, that we're releasing to the public later this year uh, from a recording standpoint, when I did it, you know what was really interesting is I walked out on stage with a tool belt and a center block on my arm and I laid it on a, on a, on a big slab to talk about the power of focus. And it's actually, some of that video is actually circulating right now on Instagram. I got to get a copy of it. Yeah, it's I just look, because what, what shook in my mind is, all right, where have I been? Where have I built my life from? Well, construction industry. How do you build skyscrapers? Well, you go deep before you go wide, before you go up, right? 
How do you build a home? Founda it always starts with the clearing the land, the foundation, right? There's all these euphemisms as it relates to construction and real estate that translate directly polar, directly on top of life, right? And in this particular thing, I was talking about the power of focus, right? Most of us, you know, we're maybe this, it's almost, it's almost like this episode is becoming all about focus, which it wasn't the intention, but I'll, it can take a life of its own. So, you know, but I was like, okay, well, you're going to focus on trying to make a, a great marriage. You're going to focus on trying to do this. You're going to focus on trying to do that. Meanwhile, you're, at your heart's content, you want to focus on becoming the best version of yourself, but you're not focused there. And one of the things that I do in, the, in this particular clip, and it's on Instagram, um, if you guys, if your folks want to check it out at Steven underscore Scoggins, but um, I go through this process. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, hitting, I'm hitting the stone with a hammer one lick at a time as hard as I can. And I want you to know that the moment I go into the same place at the same time, three licks, it shatters the whole middle of the block. It just goes to show the power of intense focus. The longer you're divide, you have divided focus, you're going to have diluted results. Okay. So if you're spending all your time mm -hmm. focused over here and focused over there and focused over here and focused over here and focused over here and focused, none of those things are going to really take shape, right? Becoming unstoppable is about becoming intensely focused. Right. Um, you know, I think we both believe in a certain level of um, uh, visioneering or manifestation at, at manifestation as at its core is visualization of intent focus. You are intently focused on the thing that you want to bring into your life, which is why it ends up manifesting in your life, because you've been intensely focused on it. good or bad, good or bad. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. So if I know that going into it, then my choice has to become. What am I going to focus on? Right? Wrong? That's, it. That's essentially what creates this momentum cycle that I think we all aspire to have. So it's one part being transparent with yourself. It's one part being focused. And it's another part of doing the work as it relates to what you're focused on. You do those three things, you can win at anything. So good, brother. I love how focused you are about being focused. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to tweet that later. <laughs> That's a soundbite. I mean, I got to tell you, like, you make it sound so simple and it is, right? Like, like, like for the, we complicate things. Like for the audience, like how do you really manifest something? Whatever it is that you're focusing on, right? Mm -hmm. Thoughts become things. Yep. Thing and grow rich, like. That's what's going to materialize. Yeah. So, and here's the best part, in my opinion. If you're not getting the results that you desire, it's just feedback from the mm -hmm. universe letting you know you're focusing on the wrong stuff. Yep. Or you're being impatient. True. True. Right? The most meaningful things in life come through, and for lack of a better word, and for our, for our female audience, please don't get mad at me. Um, the most meaningful things of life come through a birth canal. Nothing that is worth anything that's not that's meaningful is going to come super overnight and super easy. You know, okay. We were joking around uh, before we got started about uh, my recent verification on Instagram, right? Yes. Great. It's, it's wonderful. I'm excited. Like people can stop hopefully knowing that I'm not trying to sell them Bitcoin on the side when I'm not doing that. Right. All right. And all this kind of stuff. Right. From all the various uh, imitators or whatever, you know. But what most people don't understand is that's a, that and that was the entire process. That's an entire process of of getting um, quality press, being on amazing shows like this, uh, being authentic on camera, um, putting myself out there on a consistent basis with with a message that I hope resonates with folks, and just and then trusting in the process. You, you've been through verification. It doesn't happen overnight. It comes by doing a lot of the right things over time, consistently well, and then you get the result, which means. All the things you want to manifest in your life. Yes, focus. Yes, visualize. Yes, attack. Yes, go after. But also know that it comes to a birth canal. It's going, there's going to be tension. There's going to be frustration. There's going to be birth pain, so to speak, right? There's going to be all these beautiful things that are actually happening to shape you, to get you to the place of not only when you get the thing that you're manifesting, you appreciate the thing that you're manifesting. You're such a good dude, bro. I just got to acknowledge you. This is awesome. Birth canal. Like, and also so true. Like anything that, that comes, it feels like it was a little too easy. Usually is. And it ends quickly. It does. I know from experience. Yeah. I mean, just in the business realm, building multiple businesses simultaneously. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. 
Like, yeah. it's like, it's like, please put me in a, the tightest birth canal on the planet and let's see what happens. Yeah. Right. Um, at the same time, after doing it a few times now, I can, it's easier for me to do it the next time. Of course. Right. There's, there's muscle memory involved or mental memory involved, you know? Absolutely. And, and that's what I'm hoping maybe that um, I can offer vi um, value to your audience today, whether they're listening or watching or whatever is be focused, be consistent and don't get in, don't let impatience. Like if you're impatient, it's because you're probably either insecure with yourself or you're judging your performance based on somebody else's performance. That's where impatience comes from. So true. Got nuggets today, brother. Straight up. <laughs> Appreciate this is that. Great stuff. Uh, we'll pull out all the Stephen hits today. One of the, <laughs> one of the things that you said that I love uh, is your outer environment never controls the inner you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I t well, yes and no. If you were actually a person who is mindful and aware, who is aware of where they're ultimately trying to go, you've gone through the Mind transparency. Full. Exactly. You're going through the transparency process. You've gone through the focused intensity then you know that everything you want out of life is inside out, not outside in. Now, if you're lost in the darkness, which is what I was for a number of years, right? The homelessness and the whole, the whole nine, you are judging your value based on your outside endeavors. I don't have the job I want. I don't have the relationship I want. I don't have the money I want. I don't, ha I don't have, I don't have, I don't have, I can't, I won't, I never. Like what we want to do, what you and I both love doing is shaking people out of that. I'm like, no, 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 no. It starts on the inside. That's why every day starts with prayer and meditation. I want to start my day on the inside and work my way out. Yes. I love that you said that because a lot of my one-on-one -on -one clients, right? Um, they always want strategies right out the gate because they see mm -hmm. what I've done. Or build, you know, I, I, but I'm always like, we'll get to that. First, we got to get you right. Yeah. And, and they don't understand it. Like, but just, but what do I do? Like, how do I get uh, my light on my show? Like, <laughs> hold on a second. Yeah. Let, let's get your frequency vibrating on a high level. Let's make you available for the abundance yeah. right now. Um, and then all, you know, eventually they realize, thank God. And, and then, <laughs> and also like when you're operating like that, create a divine download, the strategies will come to you. Yeah. But on the flip side, you could have all the strategies, but if you're not good in here and I'm pointing to my, to my mind for the audience, that can't see nothing's going to work. Yeah. Well, look at it this way. You can have all the strategies in the world. You can be, and you could be applying the, the strategies and you could be getting moderate success. Okay. However, you were going to be empty in the process, right? Strategies alone will never take you anywhere. In fact, I will tell you that this is something that it dawned on me a number of years ago um, that I've been very honest about with people because they say, well, you know, what is the greatest mistake you've ever made in business? Okay. When you use business, the business acronym or the analogy, I said, well, Hmm, I don't know because I've made lots of them. I've, I've done lots of stupid things, some with big zeros, right? Haven't we all? Um, right. <laughs> but then I realized the number one mistake I made in business was trying to build a business without building myself. So many of us think the business is going to build our identity, not knowing that the identity is always built before the business. Nailed it. Yeah. Clarity, vision. Mm-hmm. Who, who do you want to be when you grow up? If nobody was, if no, in fact, if nobody was telling you who to be, who would you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. Are you living somebody else's life? Are you running somebody else's business? Like you have to be super honest with yourself. I'm like, is this me? Is this really me? Is this what I was created for? Is this, do I light up when it's four o'clock in the afternoon on the East coast and I get to hang out with my buddy on a podcast? Do I light up? Yes, I light up. Let's do it. It's fun. It's me. It's us. We're having, a, you know, good things always happen when we connect. It always does, right? Or do I go into that that call? I'm like, well, it's four o'clock. I have to drive four hours to Charleston as soon as it's over. It's going to be like nine or nine thirty when I get there. I don't know if I'll, I'll probably have to eat fast food on the way. Which I hate eating fast food. Like, like again, where are you focused? I'm focused on having a great time with one of my best friends on the planet. And trying to make a difference in people's lives whenever we get in, like in that zone, right? Yeah. I, All back to you, focus. As you, <laughs> as you were talking, I just had a breakthrough because, you know, in the beginning of the pandemic, when I reinvented myself, I never really articulated it until you just said it. Step one, and I never said this publicly out loud, was actually to become radically honest with myself. Mm -hmm. to acknowledge that I was not happy 
I did not want to go back to Wall Street when the lockdown was over. And, and then from there, if you can see it, you can change it. But if, mm-hmm. if you can't see it, you can't change it. So it, that was really step one yeah. is to cultivate radical honesty. Yep. Yeah. Well, and, and look, it's, it's the core. It's the nucleus. You remember in math class back in the day, and I, and I wasn't super good to math until they put dollar signs beside it. Then all of a sudden I could figure out <laughs> complex problems, which is weird, um, which is true, actually. <laughs> I believe But it. in math class, it was all about the common denominator, right? What's the common denominator? When you, when you look at a situation, when you look at a limiting belief, when you look at an aspiration, when you look at your relationships, positive, negative, whatever, they all have a charge to them. What is the common denominator that's driving that thing? And typically it's, it's us not being honest with ourselves, doing things we don't want to do to be around people that we don't like and respect, who don't like and respect us, which leaves us feeling isolated, empty, and alone right? Which is unfortunately 70% of the American population would identify themselves in that way. And it's because they're living someone else's life, which comes in a variety of forms, Yeah, right? In business, in relationships, or, you know, they, they mar- they're going to marry somebody because their aunt, uncle told them that, no, this is the one they make a lot of money. If you don't marry them, you're not going to be, you're going to struggle or whatever. Yeah. Right. But they're, they're, they're not deeply connected. There's no communication side to it there's no one that's really that that's a con that's a true confidant that they can come home to i mean you're about to have an amazing woman um as part of your life permanently right, that's right. And, and, and i can just briefly mention that big old smile pops up and it's because you it's because you you know what i'm saying is true in that the person in your relational category needs to be somebody you can deeply connect with right that's at right. a at a very deep level you know, yeah. and that's true for business and finance and so on. It's, it's it's true for everything. It's a life truth. Yeah. Full disclosure, of course, I'm going to cut content from this conversation when we drop the episode. Uh, but but I should definitely send you this video for your team as well, brother. You are on fire today. I nuggets, appreciate that, dude. Nuggets, abundance of nuggets. This is awesome. We'll land the plane with, the, with these two final ones. And I'm so excited to ask you this. You just mentioned my girl. Uh, you've been married a long time, correct? I've been married. Uh, we just put just celebrated eight years. Nice. Just celebrated um, eight years. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. What's the secret? I know it's not easy. Oh man, anybody might say, "What's the, what? What is some?" I feel uh, kind of. Thing? I feel kind of bad. Um. So when my wife and I got married, we had the most blissful engagement dating thing on the planet. Like I, it's it's like our relationship had a mind of its own. Okay. Shortly thereafter, I went into about six or eight months later, um, I discovered I was embezzled. I had embezzlement going on in one of my businesses that was substantial. Um, A year and a half or two years uh, within that time frame, my wife began having serious health issues. Um, And then from that, I had to jump back in full time to one of my larger businesses and began putting the pieces back together, which means I missed time with her and and our kids um, who became adults and literally grew six inches from in the time that I last saw them to the time I next saw them. And, you know, there have been really trying times based on the intensity of life, based on certain things, birth canals, if you will, that you have to go through. Okay. I would say that the secret is one is choosing on a daily basis that I choose, I choose to love this person. Warts and all. Um, I discovered a long time ago that true love is not loving somebody for who they are. True love is loving somebody in spite of who they are. Okay. So my wife can accept the fact that I'm a, I can be a bit of a workaholic. I love what I do. Right. I'm shocked to hear that. (laughs) Yeah. Right. (laughs) Um, You know um, she can also be, you know, sometimes uh, a little bit too aggressive at times. She's also one of the most tender people I know on the planet. Right. And it it depends on the circumstances and the situations. And I think waking up each day saying, I choose you um, is a big, big lesson, right? It's, it's choose. It's easy to choose someone to be by your side or be in your life when everything's going great. It's not so easy when they're going through health struggles or when they're going through an embezzlement and they're not emotionally or spirit like mentally available. They come home, they're burnt out. They fall asleep. They need to take Benadryl to get the strip, you know, the stress away. You know, so my relationship with my wife has been really, really over the last several years has been has had a lot of really low lows. And also a lot of really high highs. And I'm happy to say at this point in our relationship, I think we finally accepted each other for who we really are. And I think that's at the crust of it, right? I choose you. I accept you. I love you. And I'm willing to grow with you. That willing to grow with you is not just an age. 
It's also an emotional and mental and spiritual security and mentality or maturity, yeah. right? It's, I choose to become the best version of myself alongside of you becoming the best version of yourself. Not, you know, and not trying to influence the process. You know, my wife is currently on a healing journey, which I'm super excited about. Um, she's going to have a very different life um, in the next six or eight months because of some things, decisions we've made for her health um, that will, you know, will probably change the game for her, right? Um, I'm making some business decisions right now that um, will hopefully give me some free, more free time with my wife and the connection and vacationing and do some other things like that. Again, all of those are intentionally, intensely focused items that we choose in our relationship. Do you, at this point in time, can you look at the person across from you, whether you're having a fight with them right now or not, or whether you're just in the, in the love bug where it's all cuddled up and every, everything is a joke and a, you know, like a baby coo, like whatever, whatever <laughs> moment you're in, can you be equally as present and equally as content in both moments? That's the secret, to be equally content consistently. So beautifully articulated, brother, for so many reasons. Uh, and it's so true, right? Like you go through seasons in life, there's mm -hmm. going to be ups and downs, but being invested in the process, mm -hmm. meaning that when shit hits the fan, yep. right? Which, spoiler alert, it's a it's part gonna of happen. <laughs> Every now yeah, and again. Like, are you here for the, for, the, for the bad along with the good? Yeah. Right? Because it's easy to be with somebody when everything's clicking. Yeah. But can you be in harmony through the obstacles? And kudos to you, brother, for being, I mean, you are the epitome of transparent, vulnerable. I know the audience is going to really respect that. I love it about you. Um, it's just beautifully said. It, and you guys have been through some some real deep stuff. Yeah, yeah most of the deep. things that we've been through would have, have crushed, just one of the items that we've been through have crushed most marriages. No doubt. Um, and, you know, I i can talk about frequency and manifestation stuff all day it's i i believe Amen. all of that is true right i also believe i personally believe in 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 a god in a source a creator a divine being that created the whole thing the, for no other reason than a sheer enjoyment his sheer enjoyment um i have to believe before, before you continue i just want to say the last thing i was going to segue into was faith talk about alignment this is awesome yeah yeah well the reality is is for me um Faith is not something outside of me. It's something that's a deep part of me. Okay. That faith that I have is the resilience I need. Um, it's the divine download that we've been talking about through manifestation and focus and all that stuff. All that, all the stuff goes together. Like, even if I went straight biblical, I could show you in scripture where manifestation, the power of focus, the power of intensity, uh, the power of belief, the power of faith, right? Is the, is the same thing as manifesting something in your life. It's something that's not yet here that you're believing is going to manifest. Therefore it's faith. Like it's, they're, they're the same. Um, in this specific circumstance, by having a greater authority than yourself to go to, then you're able to ask questions of a greater authority than yourself to allow for the divine downloads. If you don't have an essence or, or spiritual nature to yourself, then what it does is it disrupts the power to ask the most important questions that you don't have answers to. Now, I segue in that to saying that, that some of the questions that you ask, you're not going to get the answer that you want. You're going to get the answer that you need, right? Which also means when you go to pick a spouse, because I believe in a creator, divine creator, a source, a greater higher power, I would call him Jesus. Some people call him God. Some people call him Allah, Buddha, whatever. When, when that occurs, I also realized very early on, you actually don't marry the spouse that you want. You marry the spouse that you need. The spouse, the kids, the job, the profession, none of it is designed to keep you stagnant, stifled, or in the same place that you were five years ago. All of those things that come out of a beautiful relationship with whether it be with a divine creator or whether it be with a spouse or a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever, all of that is coming from what you need in order to grow yourself. It's like the, there's a, there's a scriptural reference in the Bible that says iron sharpens iron, right? You, you, it's, it's not bread sharpens iron, right? Because bread would fall apart. It would break apart. It would fall down to the wayside. It takes iron. It takes something of equal caliber to sharpen a skill set, a maturity set, an emotional belief, a, a spiritual belief to sharpen that thing to such a thing where it will, it will cut through anything, including your own limiting beliefs with yourself. I might've gone too deep, too far, too fast. Never, but too that's, deep that's with where me. My heart's at. Never too deep with me. This is awesome. Straight up. 
uh, talk about alignment by the first of all and it's so true like I've really worked on my faith and, and where I'm at over the last couple of years significantly like I was brought up Jewish mm-hmm. but for me personally at this season of my life my, the most important thing for me is cultivating my relationship with God yeah and sometimes yeah. and this might sound controversial but like religions and like politics like it could be very dividing yeah you know? uh, yeah so- well and I think that's the I think that's the that's the thing when whether you, whether it's Judaism or Christianity or any number of the other religions, when it becomes about the religion, it's not about the relationship, right? Even before the incarnation of Jesus or whatever you want to call it, right? Even before Moses going is leading people out of Egypt, right? Yep. All of that is all about relationship. Moses had a relationship with God. Correct. Right. Some would say that Muhammad had a relationship directly with God or Allah or the that you know and that. Mm-hmm. Um, Christ, Christianity. All right. So I'll, I'll just, I'll just say this plainly. Um, sometimes the worst thing that ever happened to the Christian belief system or Christian faith system is the Christian. The Christian is critiquing other people for not being perfect, even though they know dang well, they're not perfect, which is the polar opposite of what my main man, Jesus actually said, like it's the polar opposite. We have it backwards, right? So this self enlightenment, the self search, the self, um, um, search for relationship is ultimately where you need to be securing yourself and whatever your belief system is, whatever it is, not about the religion. It's not about the tradition. There are beautiful things in the religion. There are beautiful things in the tradition. Like you talked about Judaism. I used to love the Passover. Like I used to celebrate Passover with Hasidic friends of mine. Right. I thought it was a beautiful experience. Yep. Right. It was also an honor to be a Christian and being invited to a Jewish Passover. Right. But we, there was love and respect. There was relationship. Right. And because of that, I think we brought beauty and even glory, dare say, to the divine. So, true. right. Because it's not this, if you mentioned it's not the separation that's what is what's needed. And the longer we focus on the religion and not the relationship, not only are we missing out on it from us and the divine, we're also missing out on, on you and I. That's right. Because we all are part of the collective. That's exactly right. And I like how you use the word essence, very powerful stuff. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I know you got a big drive ahead. Uh, otherwise, we'd probably talk for another 20 hours. This is <laughs> awesome. My favorite part is it's just the beginning, all things considered, of the friendship. The podcast is blowing up. We have a couple million downloads now sponsored by Mark Cuban. The audience is very loyal and hardcore. Wow. What's the best way for them to support you, brother? Well, first of all, I just want to say congratulations to the audience for playing such an amazing role in supporting your effort. Um, it, you grew it from a, from a dream and a wish and a, and a heartfelt, just like a heartfelt need to serve. Right. And I think the most beautiful things are found there. I think for us, um, yeah, just let, let me be part of your life, you know, check out the podcast. I, you know, you, you'll see a familiar face looking back at me on one of our episodes come up in the near future. Um, you'll see that, uh, we have a lot of content that's all about becoming unstoppable and, uh, being stuck in your life, your business, your career, your profession is different. It was a little bit different for everyone, but the solutions are often very similar, often very similar. So yeah, just let's connect. Let's just stay connected. Done and done. How can I personally support you? Bro, you're already doing it. Just being a good, a good friend, man. A good friend is what I need more of for sure. Done. That's easy for me, brother. I want you to know you the definition of perspective, reinvention, and growth from taking your life experience to spreading positivity, light, and deep truths. You're a true gladiator, visionary role model, and beacon of hope for anybody coming up today with big goals and aspirations. I could personally guarantee your best yet to come. Keep on spreading your wings and leaving your mark in this world. So much love and respect for you. Thank you so much for stopping by and dropping these priceless nuggets today. <laughs> My pleasure, brother. Much love. That was too good, buddy. I had a blast, man. That was fun. That was great. Yeah, you and I can literally talk for days. <laughs> to be honest with you, this has only happened a handful of times. I got a dopamine hit when we were speaking. Like it was such a good conversation. Yeah. This is this is my dinner conversation. Like this is the stuff I love to talk about. Uh, and it, and it's obviously even more special when it's a friend, but when it's real alignment, same core values and so forth. Just time extremely well spent. Absolutely. You know, you, you know, I got limbo love for you, brother. I'm looking forward to doing a lot more stuff with you. Yeah. Hell yeah.